If you're as old as me, you remember what it was like to play games that looked like this. Well, games that actually were made this way because the technology wasn't any better, not games that are made that way on purpose for nostalgia. The original Nintendo and Super Nintendo are home to some of the best role-playing games out there like Final Fantasy and Dragon Warrior, both turn-based classic role-playing masterpieces that show a bit of age in today's gaming world, but nevertheless are amazing. One might ask, what would a multiplayer version of Dragon Warrior look like that could be played online? No, we're not talking about Dragon Quest X, unfortunately. I wish I could play that game. Why? 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 But do you remember Beyond, that gaming client I talked about in another episode? Well, on Beyond, back in the day, there used to be multiplayer games that were modeled like old Nintendo or Super Nintendo games. There was Final Fantasy Online, Dragon Warrior Online, Dragon Quest, Shadows of Erdrich, and the list goes on. Dragon Warrior Online, though, is a game that was actually developed by the same team that made the subject of today's video. Developed within the Beyond client, an original the original MMORPG, well, more like MORPG, it isn't really massively multiplayer, heavily inspired by the classic Dragon Quest games was created, named Nostalgia. Never heard of it, you say? Well, I mean, I don't blame you. Pretty much all the games I cover on this series are incredibly niche, but still, Nostalgia was a pretty unique idea at the time of its release, which according to Wikipedia was all the way back in 2011 with the Steam version in 2014. The developer was Ben Malahan, otherwise known as Silk, to the Nostalgia community. The game had a small but dedicated community that played the game to its full capacity, covering everything you could think of in terms of a small niche MMO. Content like dungeons, PvP, and minigames were all here. It seemed like the game had a decently bright future ahead of itself, with an expansion even at development called the Key of Exiles. Updates came relatively frequently until one day, poof. Silk more or less disappeared. His presence around the game dwindled, with the player base questioning where he was, and eventually with years passing by, it was obvious the game was abandoned. Or was it? The website for Nostalgia is still hosted, and Silk always expressed, at least while he was still semi-active, that he wanted to return to the project someday. So in this video, let's talk about Nostalgia, and why a game like this didn't deserve its tragic abandonment. Silk Games began as a small project group that developed games on Beyond's website, apparently starting all the way back in 2001 with Dragon Warrior Online. Silk Games consisted of a few people. Balzac, yes, that is his name. <laughs> oh, you think it's funny, huh? Okay. Okay. Cable Monkey and Spiff were a few of those notable that were part of Silk Games along with Ben, aka Silk. Nostalgia specifically began its development sometime in 2009, as it was stated that the game was in development for two years. Beta testing lasted 11 months and then the game was fully released on February 23rd, 2011. The online gaming press had a decent amount of coverage for such a small indie title, and there was even a magazine article for in an issue of PC Gamer. At the time in 2011, there really wasn't anything like this in the MMO genre, and honestly, there really hasn't been anything like it since. Nostalgia had quite a bit of features that really cemented it with quality in the indie scene. Features like skill trees, stat customization, mini games, AI companions for solo play, PvP, and reputation systems, just to name a few things. Basically, all the standard MMORPG content you'd expect but in a bite-sized retro format. The game was free to play, but it did have a monthly subscription, which was rather quickly retired when the game was getting close to release on Steam, opting for a buy-to-play format rather than freemium. The first quote-unquote major news that the developers dropped on their blog site was that Nostalgia had big plans for the future, specifically major content expansions much like other MMORPGs. And it seemed like Nostalgia's first major expansion, called Key of 
the Exiles was the first of many. Announced on June 25th, 2012, Silk's blog announced many new features for players to look forward to. Player-owned housing in the form of player-owned boats was coming. A new higher level cap, new quests, new dungeons, and more was to come. No release date was given, but it was something to appease players who were invested in the game. Next came Nostalgia's Steam release, which came about two years later. The Steam release on April 15th, 2014 was a pretty celebratory milestone for Silk Games, since now more than ever could the game appeal to a larger audience. However, it had been two years since Silk announced the Key of Exiles expansion, and while content had been steadily trickling out over the years, players were now getting ever more impatient for the long-awaited expansion pack. Around the time of the Steam release, Silk's posts on the development blog became more and more scarce. As of the time of this video, Silk's last post on the blog was September 29th, 2016. Previous posts talked about the Key of Exile's development progress, and how a closed beta for the expansion was planned, but sadly that post was more or less one of the last times Silk was heard from. Apart from the blog site, Silk had posted on the Steam's forum as well as his own forum website where he would respond occasionally to players' concerns about the game. Post-2016, the forums began to question what was happening behind the scenes as the development team went radio silent. Silk would occasionally address these concerns, stating that his personal life had taken over and that development would continue in the future. But Silk, once again, soon after, disappeared. He does still occasionally seem to be active in certain times, as he has responded to some comments as recently as this year, with the scene becoming more and more barren. Players started to give up hope that Nostalgia would see further development and left. The forums eventually got shut down on December 11th, 2019, and has yet to be restored. The website itself as well as the blog and Steam page are all still up as of the making of this video strangely, which means someone is keeping the site up. Currently, the only real way to play Nostalgia Online is through Beyond's client, as buying the game on Steam doesn't allow you to connect to any hosted servers anymore as far as I'm aware, leading to frustrated customers which at this point has only added to the negative brand that Nostalgia now has. The ultimate question though is why was the game abandoned? One could argue it actually wasn't. The forums were taken offline, but it's been widely discussed by Silk himself that around the time he went dark, it was because his personal health had taken a turn for the worst. As far as I could find, he never confirmed what he was suffering from, but it must have been serious enough to have to step away from the project. Silk, if you ever find this video, I hope that one day this game does live up to its true potential. The site, in my opinion, must have a reason to still be hosted after all this time, and from what I see on the Steam forums, there is a loyal fanbase that would like to finally see this expansion see the light of day. If that ever did happen though, is it too late for Nostalgia to make a resurgence? Honestly, if there is still development being done in the background, there needs to at least be an update on the Steam page indicating that official servers are offline at the current time. Make a public post to the customers to at least start building back some rapport, but you know, maybe it's too late. What do you think? Is Nostalgia dead? Did this game miss its time to shine, or does it still have a chance? Comment down below your opinion, and did you ever play Nostalgia? My personal memories with this game is that I spent a whole summer with it, enjoying everything this game had to offer. While the game isn't for everyone because of its rudimentary graphics, it still definitely had a unique charm to it that I grew to love. I guess we can only see what the future will bring. Thanks for watching everyone. Like the video to get sent back to the nostalgic past, subscribe for more content, follow my social media links in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.